You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com. And streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is After Buzz at the Movies! Ah, patience. Hey, everybody! Bing is for doing, and what are we doing? We are doing After Buzz TV at the Movies, here to review the new rom-com zom, romantic comedy with zombies, Warm Bodies. My name is John Campy. I'm actually the editor-in-chief over at AMC Theaters, AMC Movie News. And uh, I'll just let everybody around the table introduce themselves as we're going to review this film, so go ahead. Hey, guys, I'm Chris Lee Kennedy. Hi, everyone. I'm Marissa Serafini. And I am Dan Devey from thecinemasource.com. Ooh, fancy. Make sure you put the in there. If you go to <laughs> cinemasource.com instead, you, they're going to like try to sell you theater porn. equipment. Don't do it. Thecinemasource.com. Yeah, heavy, heavy porn. Just saying. Uh, well, listen, we are here uh, tonight to talk about this new, uh, like I said, the romantic comedy with zombies. Of course, started so brilliantly by Edgar Wright's Shaun of the Dead, the very first rom-com zombie that we've ever seen. So I had a very difficult time watching Warm Bodies and not having kind of comparisons in my head to Shaun of the Dead, which is completely unfair. <laughs> I completely acknowledge that it's absolutely unfair. So let's start with this. For those of you who um, don't know what we're doing here, and there's no reason you should, because this is our first time doing it th this way, um, we are going to do an assumption here, the same way we make an assumption after Buzz TV about shows. We're going to assume you've watched the show. In this case, we're going to assume you have watched the movie since it opened last weekend. So this episode is probably going to be filled with what they call spoilers. Spoilers. If you have not <laughs> seen the film... Spoiler alert! <laughs> spoiler. <laughs> if you have not seen this movie or you are really really you know sensitive about hearing spoilers of any kind in a movie yeah go back to bed because this one isn't for you because we are actually going to go into it in quite a lot of detail mm -hmm. so let's start with this Dan let's start with you let's start with our first just your overall general impressions with warm bodies I surprisingly loved it I did not expect to I thought how can you do a romantic comedy with a zombie and how I thought it was just taking the whole zombie thing a little too far. You know, Walking Dead's fantastic. There have been some good movies, but do we really need a rom-com with a zombie? But they basically just retold Romeo and Juliet, which you cannot go wrong when you do that. It's a classic story that could be told over and over again. And... Um, as soon as I realized that basically the Capulets were the living and the Montagues were the zombies, <laughs> do, done, done. Like, I, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, right? like clearly R is R. Romeo. Romeo. Julie is Juliet. Marcus is uh, Marsutio, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mercutio. Right. Mercutio. Mercutio, Mercutio. Thank you. And, yeah. and yeah, the whole analogy mm -hmm. goes on pretty well. How about you, Marisa? Uh, overall, I enjoyed the movie, um, especially because you said Shaun and the Dead. I actually had an easier time watching Warm Bodies than I did at Shaun and the Dead. It took me like three times to watch that one so um and yeah just going off of the you know the the hype of what twilight and walking dead we have all these vampires and zombie movies out so why not have a more fun lighter side of the zombie kind of type of genre and um overall i i thoroughly enjoyed it chris Lee? I gave it a three out of five stars. Um, I thought it was funny. I thought there were some great light parts to it. Um, there were some parts that were a little too close to Twilight for me. Um, but as a whole, it was definitely entertaining. They were definitely hitting the mark that they were trying to reach, that whole ge that whole group of people that really loves the Twihards and the, the young kids. Um, there were some parts that really bothered me. Um, I'm a con continuity freak so there are some <laughs> continuity things that really bothered me um but that's just me nitpicking but overall it was fun i had fun with it and i laughed so uh, i'm gonna fall somewhere in the middle between dan and chris lee i i quite liked it uh, i love the message in the film this is actually a message movie they've got a couple of very strong messages in it but i'm one of these guys who thinks well just because you're doing a really good message doesn't mean you're doing it great. But I was entertained. I mm -hmm. liked it. I, I didn't quite live up to the hype that for a lot of other people did for me. But uh, still, I, I thought it was a really good time with the movies. I thought it was quite original, uh, the, the Shaun of the Dead comparisons notwithstanding. <laughs> um, but So let's start going through some individual elements here. Let's start with the star of the movie, Nicholas Holt. 
um, who we've seen uh, recently in X-Men First Class, who I thought was terrific as Beast. We've got him again coming up, speaking of X-Men, we've got him again coming up in uh, Brian Singer's film Jack the Giant Slayer, which I, I gotta admit, I didn't recognize him in the trailer. Hmm. Of Jack the Giant Slayer. So here we come. He's coming in. He's taking on this big. Uh, this is his first film that he's really taken over, and this is his movie to lead. Mm -hmm. And I got it. This could be challenging. Playing a zombie is the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> Playing a zombie who's starting to turn human again is not. And I got to tell you, I think the performance of Nicholas in this film was the absolute strongest thing about it. He he sold me on. Mm -hmm. You know, for those who you don't know yet, like he's this zombie who's just bit by bit and spurred on a lot of course by the female antagonist who we'll get to in a second or uh, protagonist and he's becoming human and so you he's got to play this zombie with human characteristics and it's not just the dialogue and the narration that he gives in the background that it's going on in his head but even the way he carries himself and tries mm -hmm. to talk and his conversations with Rob Corddry although we'll get to them in a second here I thought he was fantastic in this I'm suddenly my interest level after watching Warm Bodies in Jack the Giant Slayer just jumped about 60 percent knowing that he's leading the film so that was really interesting to me Dan what about you yeah I mean he's a fantastic actor anyone who saw him in a single man I mean he's yeah, just yeah. He's, he's a great actor and when you see a movie like this you kind of expect or when you hear that this movie is being made you don't necessarily expect them to be really talented actors um, but to your point about uh, you know the the message of the movie that I really loved the the thing that made me love it is that at the end of this movie they they are cured and we see zombie stories and they happen and there's no cure for it there's no end to it you just have to make sure you don't die so it doesn't happen to you <laughs> but in this there's a cure and that cure is love and love conquers all in this movie and when was the last time you saw a movie that had as simple and sweet a message as that like Yes, it seems impossible. It seems like we're not going to be able to survive whatever this is. But you know what? If you love strong enough and hard enough, you will eventually feel better. And I just thought that was great. We never see things like that. And I have to see so many movies. I love <laughs> leaving the theater feeling good about myself and good about <laughs> humanity and that we're not going to all kill each other in the end, that there is some hope. So... I, I just, I love that aspect of I it. I thought that was a little cheesy. I can't oh, lie. I wish there was Do you was not love love? I guess, I mean, I guess uh, the room, the, yeah, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I guess the hopeless romantic in me was not there when I watched this movie. That was the one thing that I was like, I just wish there was something more to like the hand holding that got them to see something. I just, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I've never seen a scary movie in my life. I will admittedly say that. <laughs> so I have no prior history of zombies until this movie so maybe I wanted them to be a little harder um, mm. but that was the only cheese that I found was that that love was going to cure the zombie. I, uh, surprisingly huh. I got to agree with you Dan on that and, and the reason why is because it kind of makes sense because if if these zombies are really just human beings but like their humanity is gone what more to start to spark the reignition of humanity with them, them if it's not love. Because right. everything else is a primal drive, right? Mm -hmm. To feed, to, to, right. to survive, whatever. But then love comes. And I like the way visually they illustrated that. When they do it, granted, it sounds really cheesy, but <laughs> when you suddenly can now transparently see into their chest and you see their heart and all of a sudden, boom, boom, that yeah. one heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, you know, visually, that's a great cue. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it is a sweet little message. Yes, it's cheesy, but yes, it's sweet. Oh, yeah, it's totally <laughs> cheesy. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The cheese it's factor cheesy. is definitely there. I, I'm just saying that I like the cheese. Like, yeah. I forgave the cheese in this because it is such a great message that we that we just don't get to see That anymore. heartbeat reminded me of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Yes, yes. exactly. So, exactly. And, and at the end of that movie, you're rooting for The Grinch to become a mm -hmm. better person. And yeah. even with the zombies are corpse because throughout the whole movie they were more references as corpse which is you know right being the bodies of a dead human so like even at the beginning they there were human qualities still there they're wearing human clothes mm -hmm. especially R. he's wearing and i noticed he was wearing a red hoodie and all the other corpse were wearing like black or really mm -hmm. dark colors and he was the only one that had color to him mm -hmm. right. so he had more um, emotion like more love especially red and so just at the beginning, like, 
there were still human qualities and you were just waiting for them to change back into human. Yeah, and you had to not give up, which is part of the message that I really like because we're so used to seeing worst case scenarios and how dark and edgy <laughs> can things be. And you know, you become a zombie. Well, I give up. They don't give up. They keep fighting. For love. Come on, for love. For love. love. Give me the cheese. Give me a cheese sandwich. It tastes good. But yeah. getting back to that point, one of the things this this highlights one of the things I really appreciate about warm warm bodies. Look, I'm actually kind of tired of zombie movies because they're all the same. It's always the same thing, exactly the same over and over and over again. But, and boy, this is gonna sound weird. The thing I appreciate about Warm Zombies is kind of like the one element that I actually appreciate about the Twilight series of films. And the one thing I appreciate about the Twilight series of films is that they were not afraid to go in and take the standard mythology of what vampires are and fool with it a bit mm -hmm. and mix mm -hmm. it up and change it a bit. Like, Wait a minute. So vampires, like, they, they don't burn in sunlight. They do this. Okay, maybe that was stupid. They sparkle. But you know what? <laughs> applaud I was for that. <laughs> applaud the, the, the daringness to do something different. Hey, each one of them has a, their own unique vampire ability, which makes them nothing more than, you know, poor man's X-Men. But still, the fact they were doing that. And I love the idea. When have we ever seen a zombie movie where the zombies can actually be cured? Yeah. Can actually be cured yeah. and changed back. And I, I thought that was terrific. Let's talk about the villains in the film for Well, a before we do that, I'd really like to hear what else you liked about Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have, to touch on the, I have to touch on the Twilight thing because going into the film as soon as I saw Summit, I thought Twilight. And even the beginning, uh, beginning of the movie, the writing was very similar to Twilight. Uh, there were a lot of shots that were the same as Twilight, which bothered me a little because I know that that's the market that they're really going for. Um, but the scene of, and I know we haven't gotten to them yet, but the scene of Julian Perry in the meadow was the same scene yeah. as, yeah. you know, and I even think that both Nicholas and Teresa have Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart qualities to them. I think that Teresa looks very much like Kristen, but blonde. So there were a lot of... You're not the first person Twilight. I've heard say that. Not there the first was, person I've heard say yeah, that. Yeah, there was a few, there was a little, it was a little too close. And I, I agree. Uh, I think the writing and the story was great. I wish that they had separated it a little bit more from Twilight because that was mm -hmm. the one thing that I didn't enjoy. But I agree because the physical surroundings in Warm Bodies, um, the the atmosphere was gray. It was very monochromatic, and and for the memories there was more warm colors. And even yes. uh, Julie's bedroom, it was very warm yeah. colors. And so and going back to Twilight, in those romantic scenes, there was a lot of warm colors to it too. So I can see where there's that. Comparison. I was just glad Ara didn't start sparkling at any time during the movie. <laughs> 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 I was waiting for that to happen. All right, let's, let's talk about the villains in the film because if yeah. you've got normally you're talking about a zombie movie, zombies are the villains. But obviously in this film, that's not the case. So mm -hmm. you have to have something else to be your antagonist. And they introduce a breed of zombie, if you will. That's a a zombie who's really far along, and they've been a zombie way too long, and they call them bonies. That's when you give up, by the way. That's when you yeah. finally That's when you give have up. No you got nothing yes. left. Because you got no have, chance. You got to have villains in the film who are <laughs> not, uh, who can't be humanized, right. yeah. and so they're going to humanize the zombies. Okay, you have to have something that you can just say, no, no, these guys are beyond hope, and that's the bonies who are basically these walking skeletons. Terrifying. I, I thought they did them wonderfully. I so good. Really yeah. Well. yeah. I, th I thought it was good. And I like the fact that the bonies didn't have eyes. Mm -hmm. So that shows right. that like, there's no soul, there's no hope and no humanity for these things. They, they can't change back. You right. have to kill. And they were, done, they were done really well. They could have been really cheesy, and they weren't. They, that was the one part of the movie that I, I was really impressed by, that the CGI or however they made them was pretty amazing. It's almost like they anticipated the objection. Well, wait a minute. Why can't they be saved too? And it's like you're saying, they did everything to dehumanize them mm -hmm. as much as they can. And I think they did a great job. I, the only thing that got me when they first came on the screen, I thought for a second I was looking at one of those first person shooter games, like Area 51 <laughs> or something. Because <laughs> they looked very much like I was half like grabbing for my gun because it was like, well, you got to take them down. But I mean, they did look great. And of course, they had to be portrayed that way that, that makes total sense but for a second I thought all right we're in a game now <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's that. talk about Teresa Palmer for a second um, now people uh, who may not be familiar with Teresa Palmer you may have seen her in I am number four which I'm gonna admit I liked more than most people did um, and, and the the 80s uh, comedy that nobody went to go see take me home tonight uh, which is the so one I 80s song they never actually used in the movie. They used like every other <laughs> 80s song, but not Take Me Home Tonight. Um, I've always enjoyed her uh, mm -hmm. very much. You can't tell from her film she has the strongest Australian accent. I'll tell you a little secret, too. First time I met Teresa was at an after party for Take Me Home Tonight, and her date was Zac Efron. 
Nice. Oh, wow. Yes. So there, there's a little bit of insight mm, into Trish Palmer. Interesting. Um, again, I mean, not as strong as Nicholas. I think she sold the character. I think she mm -hmm. sold the role. I was really pleased to see her in this. And I, I've been kind of pulling my hair a little bit, saying, look, yeah, nobody saw I Am Number Four. Nobody saw Take Me Home Tonight. But she was strong in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's, she's got great screen presence. She's a beautiful girl. She's got chops. I hope she can do something that will, you know, kind of launch her a little bit further into her career. And I think this might be the movie to do it. So, I don't know. Am I the only one? Like, I love Trace in this. I saw both of those movies, Take Me Home Tonight, and I, I Number Four. I enjoyed both. Um, I got to say, um, Teresa Palmer in Warm Bodies, she she does have a lot of characteristics and mannerisms that reminded me of Kristen Stewart in Twilight. Mm -hmm. And it just, it, I had a hard time, like, just diff, diff, um, like separating the two, and, like, it just kept seeing really? Bella. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? It I just kept seeing Bella. I was oh, like, my God. Oh. That, that's interesting that that's the, the female perspective seems to be agreed on that, and I think the male perspective is a little, like, I didn't see any, because Kristen Stewart is just, I, I, sorry, mm. is terrible. But Kristen <laughs> yeah. Stewart as Bella, not in any of her other films, just as it's Bella. It's the same as thing. They had it's no, the, see, I've never seen her as anything other than like hmm. Panic Room. Panic. She was different in Panic Room. <laughs> she was also twelve. Touche. Oh, Touche, sir. Touche. They they even they have the same mannerisms even with their hands when they get awkward and uncomfortable they start playing with their fingers. Really? I noticed that. Yeah. yeah. I, when she was cuddling up on like in the chair, you know. Just, see, that's totally. why that's why you didn't enjoy the cheese. You were paying attention to the wrong things. I, you yeah. were focusing Fetal on the bad stuff. I was nitpicking a little yeah. bit. But I, I see that. a lot more life in Trace of Palmer. So than I much yes. more. Yes. Oh my gosh. There are more she, emotions. Yeah, and I more agree. layers to and, Teresa Palmer's character. And Teresa was very believable in the part. Like you believed that she was scared when she was scared. You believed that when she finally fell in love with him, like she was sitting talking to her friend and saying, like, I kind of miss him. It's an yeah. you it felt nice the awkwardness. Scene. Yeah, you, you really. I mean, she. I thought she was great. You know what? I, I I'm gonna feel really bad here. I, you know, I've even got the IMDb page open, but I'm not gonna look it up. I, uh, Aaliyah Tipton is that who it is? The girl who mm -hmm. plays her best friend. Yeah. I have not seen her in anything since she was in Crazy Christ. Stupid Love. That she, I loved her in mm -hmm. that, and I've been wondering why I haven't seen her pop up. So it was really cool to see her pop in this. I think John Malkovich is. He's your stereotypical disapproving hard ass dad. I mean, yeah. nothing yeah. nothing positive or negative to say about there. He he was who he was. I thought this, let's talk about Cordy just for a second before we get to the negatives. Oh. The when Cordy first comes on screen, my first fear was I'm just gonna see Rob Cordry. I'm just gonna see the hot tub time machine guy. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna see. And and you know what? It that's true. But he makes it work. He it becomes really, really oh, yeah. funny. And his interactions with R uh, in this were, were just priceless. And even the way they would grunt at each other. That mm -hmm. scene yeah. where they're just grunting at, bar, at each at other. Yep. Oh, my word. I, I just thought that worked. And what's his, what's his line? That Those bitch, bitches? Bitches are crazy or something. Like he says bitches something. be crazy. Bitches be crazy. As a yeah. zombie, it's like... Yeah. Bravo, sir. <laughs> well Bravo. done. Bravo. Very well done. That's one of the things I really enjoyed about the film was the writing was amazing. Yeah. Like, mm. it, I mean, R's internal monologue was you felt for him and you laughed with him and you were like, aw, at mm. parts. The <laughs> writing was brilliant on this, and I felt like yeah. that was what made it more enjoyable for me was that despite the cheese and despite <laughs> the continuity, um, the writing was really good, so it did keep you entertained and it made you laugh at the right parts and the, the whole theater laughed. It wasn't just us. Like, we were laughing at some of the other stuff, but the whole theater <laughs> laughed together at, and I think that I mean, the writers are brilliant. Yeah, and I love when uh, mentioning the the sweater that he's wearing, how he says, like, based on my wardrobe, I'm pretty sure I was an underachiever. Yeah. I don't remember <laughs> what my job was. I'm but unemployed. Right. Like, I thought that was great. I, it, so many great, great lines from a guy mm -hmm. who can't talk. It's yeah. just... Yeah, really and, well and done. And you talked about the fact that it was loosely based on Romeo and Juliet. And, right. and you, you can't go wrong with the story, but yet people have gone wrong with oh, the story. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally, They've done totally. a really yeah. bad job. Yeah. And this wasn't a bad job of that. It was it was kind of impressive. You mentioned yeah. some of the great lines in the film. One of my favorites from our, he's talking about the bonies and about how they're really vicious killers. And he says, they'll eat anything with a heartbeat. Well, I mean, so will I, but at least I'm conflicted about it. Yeah. Right. It's yes. such a great thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let, let's get to some of the negatives about the film, because one of the things you guys will learn about me really quick is that even if I love a film, I'm very open about, okay, yeah, but it had weaknesses. Mm -hmm. It's not me being a hater. I still really like the film, but let's be honest about the weaknesses. Two things that jump out at me, I want to get your guys' impressions on this. Number one, they seem to introduce this theme near the beginning 
when he's on the escalator, you hear him thinking, saying, oh, I wish I could be human because then I could have connection with people. And those living people sure could do that. But all the living people are just looking at their phones and devices. Mm -hmm. So it seemed Loved like there that. was, was going to be this theme about you know, connection and humanity and stuff like that. But I felt they really let that slide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My second big problem with the film comes with Little Franco. Where, Aww, man. Aw, Davey. No, and I love David. <laughs> Man, she got over him dying really fast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like after not Bob even a tear. Gone. It's like, really, not even a tear. Played that a bit more. Like, what, what do you guys think about that, or were there other problems you saw? That actually was the one thing that I completely understood. Was they showed that that scene of the people in the airports, which was obviously in the past, hustling and bustling on their phones. They had, they're talking about communicating and relating to one another. But yet, in real life, that's what we do: is we're on our phones. And then they cut to the current where the people are living beyond these walls and their lives are consisted of being fearful of zombies. And mm -hmm. so many of them have lost so many people because of these zombies that I, I feel like you're so used to people dying mm -hmm. that at that point it's just like, oh, well, they got another one. That's a good point. And actually, I, yeah. I, I feel like that, that was the one thing that I did understand that because they've had so much tragedy and these zombies have had such a negative impact in their lives that, well, I've lost my mom, I've lost this one, he lost his, it's just another one. Yeah. Yeah, I guess live in in being alive. You forgot to they forgot to live. Right, and yeah. also the the moment of when they're going out and she goes to hold Perry's hand and he takes his hand away and he's like all business. That was such a moment for her that she realized that there was nothing else there. There was no mm -hmm. feeling behind that because if he felt for her and not just killing the zombies, that hand held would have been a bigger deal. Where when R finally holds her hand, it's such a bigger moment because right. she feels it back. She, she also is so incredibly strong, and let's face it, Franco's character, not, not a tough guy. No. Like, he no. forces himself to try to learn to become a tough guy, even though he's not, which mm -hmm. I think is, is one of the great things about the film is that gender reversal, because when you see the two of them together, she's playing the more masculine role and he's playing the more feminine role. She's leading him, like, let's go this way, and he's like, I don't want to go that way. Yeah. <laughs> right. it, it, follow the rules! So <laughs> I think there was that disconnect between the two, and they say that women are always looking for their fathers, and her father is an incredibly strong, mm -hmm. not pretending, but a strong man, and Franco wasn't. And then you've got someone like Nicholas who comes along, you know, R who comes along, who is so strong that he, and strong in a different way, not in mm -hmm. a military way, but, you know, strong with love. And he's able to do something <laughs> with, with love that no <laughs> one's ever done before. So for me, it was, he was just such a better fit for her mm -hmm. and kind of what she was looking for. And I think, again, to the point, so many people die in zombie-type situations. How many choices did she have? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. like what her dating pool wasn't that extensive. Mm -hmm. So well, they were probably together more because, well, you know, all right. But and in that yeah. scene with her friend, she says that. She's like, I know dating's kind of hard because right. everybody's <laughs> dying, but a zombie? But they seem to go to great lengths to show that in his memories, as, as ours eating his brains and he's seeing his memories, there seemed to be genuine love between, you know, Franco and, and her. They seemed to be genuine, but he was like, and one of the things I like about this film is normally the in movies, the ex-boyfriend or the current boyfriend of the girl that the hero wants to date is usually a douchebag. They make right. him out to have some big, huge character flaw. And I love the fact that, no, Franco was loyal, dedicated, dutiful. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. all that, all these good things, which only kind of heightened for me when he dies. She's like, oh, I'm sad. Mm -hmm. Well, you're cute. <laughs> uh, so, okay, look, we're just about out of time here. I think she likes the father more. I think Perry liked the father more than yes. he ever yes. liked Julie. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with you on that. So, listen, we're running out of time, so let's just quickly run around the table one more time just to sum up, and out of five, give your rating of Warm Bodies. Dan, let's start with you. Okay, um, out of five just for movies in general or out of five for rom-com zoms that I've seen? <laughs> <laughs> let's, go, let's go movies in general. Okay, movies in general. All right, I just wanted to clarify. Um, I, I thought it was really good. I, I think it has a great message behind it. Again, we haven't seen a lot of it. I think that uh, probably the only negative that comes to my mind that you mentioned before is uh, that message of being disconnected in society now with our phones and stuff. I think they could have done more with that because that's a really interesting thing to explore. But I like that it was in there. I love the the optimism of the movie, and uh, I thought the cast was great, even though Franco was there for five seconds, never complain having to look at him. So uh, I give it a four. All right. All right. Um, I'm gonna have to say three and a half for a, for a zombie movie. You kind of want to see a lot of deaths, a lot of you know, 
decapitating of zombies, and we did get that near the end where, you know, they're all fighting. But um, I thought it was, there was going to be a lot more action, and we only got a little bit of it. And um, for, like, the beginning of the movie, I kind of had a hard time getting into it. I thought a lot of scenes were a slow pace, and I thought they kind of lasted a little bit long, too long. Um, but the, overall, it, it was a nice, feel-good movie, and... But for, is it award-winning? No. Mm. <laughs> no. No. But for a nice, fun movie just to watch, yeah, three and a half. Chris Lee? I'm going to go with three stars. Um, I think that it was entertaining. I think that it was funny. Um, I think that the actors were great. My two biggest problems with the movie were, um, one, I wish that at some point in R's inner monologue, he would have addressed the physical changes that we saw. Because um, at the beginning, when I saw the scar and his lip was all of a sudden gone, I was like, wait, bad makeup. Why is the <laughs> scar gone? But then as this movie progressed, you realize that as he was becoming more human, he was literally becoming more human and healing. Um, so I wish that his inner monologue had addressed that, because I think that got lost a little bit. Um, and the second thing that I hated was uh, the BMW you, that they crashed into a car and mutilated, but then in the next scene, it was all fixed. It was, all it was good to go. It was good to go. So that, you know, that's Dukes a continuity thing for me. But, you know. All right, and I uh, am going to give the correct answer. The correct answer folks, <laughs> is three and three quarters of a star. Okay. Uh, um, I really enjoyed that. I think it was bold. I think it was very creative. I think it took a really fresh look at a t very tired genre. I love the integration of the Romeo and Juliet motif into it. Mm -hmm. I think I think the performances were strong. I do wish they had taken advantage of that opportunity to, to go on to the message of the film a little bit more. A few little iffy issues like getting over the dead guy really fast. Wait a minute, the bony started to smell Cordry's heart beating. How did he get out? He said, he said, oh, they chased me away. No, no, they were face to face. They were about to kill you. Um, but little things like that. But overall, I thought it was a really good movie and I'm going to recommend people run out to see. But hey, listen, folks. Oh, wait, um, I'm sorry. Before, oh, yeah, you, before you go, there's just one other scene and I can't believe no one else has mentioned it that I want to bring up. The scene Scene when she's in the bedroom and he's on the floor and she's kind of you know getting oh, undressed right. and and getting in there. I actually asked Nicholas this question at the junket and uh, his answer was interesting. I said, you know, I, I I was into the movie. I get it. Suspension of disbelief, but. I'm sitting there watching this, and he's getting all excited, like, ooh, maybe he's going to get some action, maybe something's going to happen. He has no blood flow. <laughs> <laughs> what can happen? Like, what are you hoping for? And his answer was, it was more of like a, you know, love and respect kind of a thing. He wasn't trying to get laid. But just for Jeez. that one scene, I was like, no blood flow, nothing going to happen. But at the end of the movie, his blood was flowing. Yes, That's true. Yes, yeah. by then, mm -hmm. everything totally. was working yeah. completely properly. Uh, but listen, folks, what we'd like you to do at this point is jump on over, and you can find us on iTunes. Go on over there and search for us there. And don't forget, the most important part of all this is what you have to say. Let us know your thoughts on Warm Bodies and give us suggestions and comments about how you think we can improve this show. Thanks again for joining us. For everybody at this table, my name is John Campion. and until next time, we'll see you later. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz See you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.